Hello, 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 hello. Happy, yep, it's still Sunday, 11.52 p.m. on the East Coast, so it's still Sunday. Hopefully everyone had a, a wonderful weekend, um, playoff weekend, and I am I am recording this because I just want to be able to state facts because uh, obviously I, I get distracted very easily, and I want to be able to stay on topic, and I'd love... I'd love to hear everyone's comments on what I'm about to say. And again, you don't agree with me? That's fine. I don't want everyone to agree with me. But what I want is if you don't agree with me and you have a rebuttal, give me facts behind your reasoning. And if you say just because or throw out a statement, I'm not going to acknowledge it. If you have valid talking points, then you know what? I'll listen and see if you can rebuttal anything that I'm saying. So let's just start off with the Chief Dolphins game. The one thing I looked at was the concern was um, the Dolphins going into what? The, the, the coldest game or playoff game? Um, in Kansas city, obviously Miami, you know, the city of sun. Um, and, and I think Tua Tungalova is what? Oh, for eight or oh, for nine, or maybe has never won when the temperature is under 30 degrees, something like that. So as you can saw, they struggled, but forget the weather, forget Tua's um, winning percentage in cold weather. It was tackling. The Dolphins just didn't tackle well. And again, the thing that I saw was just hitting guys up high. I mean, there was a there was a play where uh I don't know if it was Pacheco. I think it was. It was where they did that little and they did it against us, that little fake toss to Mahomes coming across. Actually, it was the same play. And Ramsey met him at like the two yard line, but since he was so high, the running back, those running backs, lower bodies are just so strong and he just pushed him in the end zone but you know what i'm going to say if, if if you take those legs out wrap them at least this because a running back is going to have a forward lean and if you come low and chop those legs out they're probably going to fall right down right there now can he stretch out and do this yeah he can could it, are his arms long enough for a two-yard stretch i don't think so but i know if you hit him up high between ramsey and an and a NFL Pacheco, second-year guy, a tough running back, he's going to win that every time. So that's that's about as far as I'm going to go with the, the Chiefs uh, and Dolphins game. Was it was just it, it came down to fundamentals of football and tackling. Uh, I will say this: when I watched the Green Bay Dallas game, Green Bay is going to be a tough, tough team in the future. They're a young team. And I hadn't watched them play it all this year, but I know this. I know Dallas, I think, now correct me on my stats, but I heard the announcer say he hasn't lost at home in two years. So going down to Dallas, AT&T Stadium, I think is what it is, Jerry Jones land, to put up that victory against them. Jordan Love, <laughs> he's... I, I, and I'm just going off of one game. Really good. Really good. Uh, Dobbs, our receiver, number 80, Romeo Dobbs. Really good. Really good player. Um, Aaron James, Green Bay's running back. From what I saw against a really good Dallas team, seems like a pretty good running back. And then Luke Musgrave, their tight end, is a freaking monster. Really good player. Really, really, really good player. But then as I'm watching that game, of course, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna tie everything back into the Raiders with this because I don't give a fuck about these other teams. I don't. Besides the Lions, and I'll get to the Lions game, but I look at I look at CD Lamb. And I'm just thinking, you know, we had a chance to, to draft this kid. 6'2", 200 pounds, runs a 4'5", And obviously, you know we chose Ruggs. And I get it, Ruggs, 
Four two seven forty. 42 inch vertical jump, but he's 5'11, 188. I mean, I'm watching CD Lamb out there, man, and he he's a physical specimen. And I go back to the like, why are you taking rugs over CD Lamb? I remember that I, I remember that draft going, what? Are you shitting me? And just watching CD Lamb playing that game, I'm going, wow, man, we would I'd love to have that guy in silver and black. And not blue and silver. So, um, I will say this: I don't know who the kid is, but their their kickoff returner, I think his name was Turpin for Dallas. That guy is fast, good returner. And I, you know, Dallas QBs just seem not since Troy Aikman have been able to win in the playoffs. You go, you, you go to Prescott, who I, I like Prescott. I I respect Prescott. You know, coming from Mississippi State, um, guy with no issues. I think he's a great leader. Um, I remember, was it this preseason or was it last year's? I think it was this preseason when he wasn't playing. You know what? He had his headphones on and he was out there. And, and, and the coach, which I give a lot of credit to, the coach let him call the plays. I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. And in our history... We've had guys in preseason games that just don't even show up. But here's the guy, Prescott, not playing, but you know what? He's he's sitting there getting better. He's 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 forming a relationship with backup quarterbacks. He's learning. I think that was very progressive for a head coach to allow his starting quarterback to be and call the offensive plays. So I like Prescott. But for whatever reason, Tony Romo, Prescott, they, they can't win in the playoffs. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is with that. But again, just to recap, Green Bay, Love, Dobbs, Aaron Jones, and Luke Musgrave are, 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 are really good. And they're a young team. They're, they're going to be tough in that NFC. They're, they're a tough team to battle. And now looking at the NFC North, man, is, is becoming quite a quite a conference. Uh, it always used to be kind of a one or two horse race, but now, I mean, with Minnesota and Green Bay and the Lions and even Chicago, it's tough. It's tough. I will also say this: um, when you look at other guy, uh, Dallas, I really liked um, Ferguson, their tight end, very good. And as you can see, there's a theme here, right? Luke Musgrave, tight end. Ferguson, tight end. And this will play on in, in, in some of the other games I'm going to talk about. But I go back to the head coach, Matt LaFleur. You know, what he's done at Green Bay and, and, and brought, resurrected those, resurrected that organization. And you know, I love it. I love representing my Michigan boy, boys. Boys. What the hell was that? Uh, but Michigan guys. He's from Mount Pleasant, Michigan. And I'm pretty sure, I think, I'm almost positive I, I ran track against him in high school. Um, got to start at Saginaw Valley State University and then just worked his way up, man. I think he's been doing really, really good. Really, really good. Really, really, really good. So there's my take on uh, the Dallas Green Bay game. <clears throat> now you talk about the Lions game. I don't know if you guys watched it, but. Dan Campbell, what he's done for that organization. And, and here's the deal, guys. Obviously, 90, well, 85%. Well, I, yeah, I don't. 75% of my loyalty is for the Raiders. But again, I'm from Michigan. Grew up, not a huge, but a, a Lions fan. Loved Barry Sanders. I was a running back coming out. Running back and cornerback. So Herman Moore, Corey Schlesinger, uh, Chris Spielman, Benny Blades, Robert Porsche, uh, Jerry Ball, um, uh, uh, Johnny Morton, um, Eric, Eric, uh, oh God, who is that quarter? Eric Kramer, Rodney Pete, Andre Ware. You know, these are all guys I grew up watching. So, and, and I finished my NFL career with the Lions. 
and would have loved to, to stay. And actually, when I was with the Lions, Dan Campbell was one of my teammates. He was a tight end. And what he's done for the organization, 32 years it's taken the organization to win a playoff game. 32 years they have not won a playoff game. And I, I, and I'm looking at this, and I hope this stat is right. I thought I wrote it down, but nine consecutive playoff losses. Dan Campbell comes in as a former player, and I love, and this is going to go back to AP uh, for the Raiders. I love former players getting an opportunity to lead a team because you can see it works. And here's the deal. Nowadays, NFL is is – is win right now. I need these guys, rookies, rookie head coaches, rookie players. We want to, we want, we want you to win right now, or you know what? We forget about it. And one thing the Lions organization and, and, and management has done is given him three years, and you can see what it's doing. And last year they should have made the playoffs. Now you see what they're doing now. And that that has a lot to go with Dan Campbell and setting setting a culture, setting an attitude. Setting a mind state of, of guys, listen, trust me. Trust in what I'm doing. Trust in my system. Trust me in the offseason. Trust me during training camp. Trust me during OTAs. Trust me during mini camp, training camp. Trust me. And they bought in. And I want to bring up one play. Uh, it was towards the end of the game, which, you know, they're only up by one. And there's a lot of time left. If they don't get a first down, um, the Rams have a chance to, you know, win the game with a field goal. And you talk about St. Brown, their receiver. And one thing I talked about this year with the Raiders was, and again, you know, it happened with Devontae Adams quite a bit, but I know it happened with other guys, is getting to the sticks. Getting to the sticks. We and this wasn't even on third down with 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 St. Brown. This was on second and second and nine. But you know what he did? He he pushed past the sticks and then came back. He came up past the sticks, turned around, used his body, boom, first down, and it won the game. It won their first playoff game in fucking thirty two years. And there were many plays where our guys on third down. We're catching it right there, and they're not getting past the sticks. And that's just co- – that. that's – to me, that's coaching. That's fundamentals. That's easy stuff to, 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 to do. And you see, that's why the Lions offensive coordinator I, – I can't think of his name right now – has a lot of opportunities as a head coach because it's the little things like that that win games. And it's the little things like that that lose games. And that, and you can go back almost every game. I'm going. Why don't you get get to the sticks? Because I know this. When Rob Ryan was our defensive coordinator, and uh, Clayton Lopez was my defensive back coach, and, and and Chuck Pagano and Willie Brown, stay at the sticks. Don't go past the sticks. Make those guys go around you, because that's where they got to get. It's a win for the defense if you catch it. I don't care if it's third and 25 and they get 24 yards. They're punting. Third and two and they only get one. They're punting. That's a win for the defense. Doesn't matter how many yards you give up on that play, but if they don't get a first down, it's over with. We had guys that didn't do that. And you see the coaching and why the Lions are doing so well is because of stuff like that. So again, they gave Dan Campbell, this is his third year, they given him three years. And now looking at it and thinking about this, you know, I think AP deserves a shot. I think he does. I think he does. Now let's go and talk about the Cleveland Texans game. And I haven't watched Houston. Um, I haven't really watched Cleveland. I know that Cleveland has a very good defense. I know they have a very good offensive line. I know, I know Kareem Hunt is a beast at running back. Um, and CJ Stroud, you know, rookie quarterback that we passed up, right? 
I knew CJ Stroud was good again. I, and here's the thing. People call me, well, you're a homer, Stu. You know, Purdue and the Big Ten. Well, that's what I know best. So, I mean, do you want do you want me giving opinions on SEC or Big 12 or Pac-12? I mean, I'm going to give my general opinion, but what I know is Purdue and the Big Ten. I grew up in Michigan. All right? I grew up around the Big Ten. I played in the Big Ten. I live in Indiana, West Lafayette, Purdue campus. So that's that's my wheelhouse. So of course I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about them. But again, I knew I knew CJ Stroud was better than the kid from Alabama right away, just off of size alone. Just like just like Justin Fields. I watched him at Ohio State. Stud, man. Stud. But you go over and you look at um and again, what I talk about, Green Bay, tight end, Luke Musgrave, Dallas, tight end, Ferguson. Just go with this. And even though, you know, I don't like the guy, Kansas City. Um, well, geez, why can't I even think of his name? Number 87. I'm not going to deny that the guy's a great tight end. He is. He's a he's a great tight end. Hall of, probably might be a Hall of Fame tight end. Doesn't mean I like the guy, but I'm, I'm going to give him his due respect. A big reason why Mahomes is so good. Every great quarterback has a great tight end. And you look at you look at um, the Browns. Jordan, the six foot three, two hundred forty five pound uh, tight end from Miami, fifth round pick. He took a play 76 yards and was out. Very impressive. Very, very, very impressive. Very, very impressive. And now we look at, and now th 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 there's a point to this. We look at Joe Flacco. You know, I, I, I respect for Joe Flacco. A guy came out of, I think, Maine and uh, FCS school or division. I think it's FCS. Um, but here you go. You <laughs> and we'll actually, well, okay. How do I want to do this? So, let, so Cleveland, there, there's two quarterback things I want to bring up. And let's just look, let's just look at this year. Let's look at Flacco, who's won a Super Bowl, a guy who's played a lot of football, a lot of football, long time in the NFL, and five starts. For Cleveland this year. And Cleveland, according to PFF, second best offensive line in the in, in the in the NFL. Okay. Flacco, a Super Bowl champion, eight interceptions and five starts. Flacco in a playoff game. Cleveland again. At top, number one, number two defense. You're talking about a team with the number one, number two defense. The number two offensive line. Kareem Hunt is a running back. A lot of great receivers. One being David Bell, Purdue guy. Guy I love. Great, great, great. Best hands I've seen since Jerry Rice. Back-to-back -back plays. Flacco throws two pick sixes. Back-to-back -back in the playoffs. Back to back for touchdowns. And then sacked a bunch of times. Christian Harris, the linebacker for, for Cleveland, pick six and then a, a huge sack on third down. I like number 26 for Houston Singletary, their running back. I like him. Um, and then I also liked Houston's. Again, we talk about tight ends. So again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna reiterate Green Bay, Luke Musgrave, Dallas, Ferguson. These guys could, I think contributed for three or four touchdowns between each other in that game. Travis Kelsey, there you go. Chiefs. Had a pretty decent game for them. 
Cleveland, their tight end I talked about. 76 yard, number nine, Jordan. 6'3, 245, 76 yard touchdown where he was he was running away from guys. Houston's tight end. Where do I have it? Uh do where's he at? Steven, wait, hold on. Where is it? What's his name? Sorry, guys. Sometimes I can't read my own handwriting. Uh, I think it was number 87. There was a play where Stroud just dink and made a great play. Steven Nealon? Do I have Steven Nealon? Nelson? N N Nielsen? No, no, sorry. Number 86, Schultz, the tight end for Houston. So if, if there is a common theme, tight ends came up big in, in, in these first two days of playoff games. Came up really big, really big. There's a point that I'm going to get to. I'm sure you guys probably know. Tight ends a very, very important position for quarterbacks, man. Very, very, very important. Now, Let's go over this. Now we're going to now we're going to bring everything back to the Raiders. Okay? One I talked about, you know, Dan Campbell, former player, Lions organization gave him 3 years. Look what he's done with the Lions. First playoff win in 32 years, done something a team hasn't done in so so, so long. And I I know the the hardship of being a Lions fan and to bring that to Detroit is huge. Really, I mean, as far as what I would think the lions and the Raiders fan base are very, very similar as far as their passion uh, for their team, very blue collar, you know, very, you know, hard hat, lunch pail, go to work and, and do your shit. So now again, so I relate that to AP. And you know what? Maybe in the last two days, I, I haven't watched anything. Maybe they've made a decision. I apologize if they have because I haven't seen anything. I haven't really looked. Um, obviously, you don't. I want Ed Dobbs. Sorry, Ed Dodds uh, as GM and, and AP as the coach. Let's go. And I, I'm, I'm fine with keeping the same offensive coordinator. I'm fine with that. But now let's talk about one of the main subjects is quarterback. And, and you guys know I was going to go here. Uh, you know my feelings on Aiden O'Connell. And again, I go by stats, guys. Here's a well, it's just he's a Purdue guy and you know him, so you're a homer. Guys, listen, it, it, I'll, I'll tell you when he makes mistakes. And if he and if he if I thought he wasn't a right fit for us in the future, I'd tell you. But for what he did in his rookie season and what he had around him and what he had to deal with, and his it is his passes. I mean, the kid's a fourth round pick. He's good. I mean, I watched him do this for the last six years. He he is a he is a 10, 12, 14 year NFL veteran. That's my opinion. And I played against guys and I I, I know talent. But here, let's just say this. Deshaun, Deshaun Watson. And again, I'm just, I, I, I'm picking, I'm picking from what I hear people wanting. Mobile quarterback, dual threat quarterback. There's a difference. Dual threat quarterback is a guy who they designed, is, is, is Michael Vick, is, is, um, is, is uh, Jackson. I can't think of his first name right now. For uh, Baltimore is Colin Kaepernick. Those guys are dual threat guys. Guys like the kid at LSU who won the Heisman. Okay? A mobile quarterback, and here's the deal, I don't I, I don't think there's anything other than a dual threat or mobile cuz mobile just means that you can you can you can get out of situations with your legs to throw it. You ask Rod, you know, Rod Woodson, a very close friend of mine. 
one of the greatest to ever play the game from from Fort Wayne, Indiana. DB at Purdue still has a still has track records here at Purdue. Played a long time in the NFL. Pretty close to the all-time interception leader of the NFL. I asked him, I said, who, who is the best quarterback? And before I could even get it out, he said, Dan Marino. And he said, Dan Marino had nothing to work with. He said, Dan Marino, if you think of uh, mobile quarterbacks, people go, oh, Dan Marino. He said, but he was just mobile enough just to get out of a little, just here and slide to throw it. And he also said, well, his throwing motion was so quick that you couldn't get a read on him, but. There, I mean, what quarterback, guys, just sits back here like this with his, with his feet rooted in the ground? I mean, guys got ability to move. If you want to – shit, against Denver, Aiden O'Connell had two touchdowns against five- and six-man pressures where he kept it alive with his feet and, and threw it. Michael Penix supposedly – Dual threat quarterback. At one point in the game, he was 0 for 6, 0 for 7 under pressure. So Deshaun Watson, I would consider him probably, a, you know, I would say he's a mobile quarterback. Would you what would you guys consider him? Uh, a dual threat? I mean, the guy's mobile at Clemson. He ran around a lot. That was his thing, right? Athletic quarterback. Signs a $230 million contract. Okay. Twenty twenty two, December fourth, after serving his suspension for his off the field antics. A guy making two hundred and thirty million dollars. And again, it here's the deal. The more you make, the more that's expected. $230 million. Okay. Here's his first game back. He was 12 of 22 for 131 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. Worst passing rating of his career, 53.4. That's his introduction to Cleveland after signing 235 years, 230 million. Then you go to December 24th, 2022, against the Saints, week 16. 15 of 31 for 135 yards and a pick. So his. His his first four games with the Cleveland organization after signing again, I'm going to repeat this, $230 million contract. Here's his four games. 71 completions out of 123 attempts, 703 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. And one, 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 one rushing touchdown for a athletic dual threat mobile quarterback. January 8th, 2023. His final stats as a starter three for three. So three wins, three losses. Completed 58% of his passes. For 1,102 yards, this is six games, 1,102 yards, zero fourth quarter victories, career low, 79.1 QBR, seven touchdowns and five interceptions in six games, seven touchdowns, five interceptions, went three for three, three wins, three losses, 58% completion, Percentage, $230 million, $230 million, okay? And I, I, I say that, 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 you know, his first time with Cleveland, because, you know, he, he had, I think he had, what, 
served a year suspension. So it, it's almost kind of like him coming back as almost a rookie. You know where I'm going to go with this. Then I go to Aiden O'Connell. Well, no, no, no. Let's do this. Before I get to Aiden, let's let's say so you say, well, that's dude, that was 2022. Okay, whatever. Fuck 2022. Let's go to 2023 then. His second year with the organization. His second year under a five-year, $230 million contract. Six starts. Again, three for three. Here, here here's <laughs> Hold on, wait, 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 no, no, that's not right. Forgive me. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. Here we go. 2023. Here we go. So I looked up, well, you know, okay, here's a mobile quarterback. Here's a quarterback that's making $230 million. Not playing very good, right? Well, let's see how his offensive line is. Oh. PFF rankings, number two offensive line in the NFL. Also with one of the top defenses in the NFL. So in 2023, he went six for he, he was six and six. Here's the stats: 105 completions in 171 attempts for 61.4 uh, percent completion rating. Threw for a 1,115 yards, seven touchdowns. Four interceptions, QBR of 84.3. Then he rushed 26 times. Again, athletic, mobile quarterback. Rushed 26 times for 142 yards, one touchdown. He was sacked 17 times. In six games, oh, sorry, in 12 games, he was sacked 17 times for a loss of 85 yards. Five Fumbles, two lost. Let's read that again. Deshaun Watson. $230 million contract. Went six and six with an offensive line that ranked at number two in the NFL and a defense that was always one or two in the NFL. 105 completions and 171 attempts for 61.4% completion, 1,115 yards, seven touchdowns, four interceptions. QBR of 84.3. He rushed 26 times for only 142 yards for one touchdown. Sacked 17 times. Lost 85 yards. Fumbled five and lost two. Let's go over Aiden O'Connell. And this is where I'm going to end it. Aiden O'Connell. Signed a four-year deal worth $4.34 million making just a little over a million dollars a year. Four years, 4.34 million. Our offensive line, because everyone says, oh, he's sacked too much. We need a mobile quarterback. He's bad under pressure. Offensive line of, that was ranked 19th, according to PFF. But still with that, finished five and five. Completed 62.1% of his passes for 2,218 yards, 12 touchdowns, seven interceptions, one rushing touchdown. Fumbled the ball four times, lost it twice. Sacked 24 times for 173 yards. Five and five, 62.1%. 2,218 yards, 12 touchdowns, seven interceptions, one rushing touchdown, four fumbles, lost two, sacked 24 times. Deshaun Watson, $230 million contract, had the number two offensive line in the NFL. Six starts, went three and three, 500. Aiden O'Connell, five for five, 500. Completed 99 passes out of 171 attempts. For 58.2% completion. Aiden O'Connell, 62. Beats him there. Deshaun Watson, 1,102 yards. And again, I know it's 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 not as many games. I get it. I get it. But think about this. 
in, let's see, six games compared to 10. Seven touchdowns, five interceptions with Watson, while Aiden O'Connell had 12 touchdowns and only seven interceptions. And that's four more games. Watson, 36 rushing attempts, one touchdown. Aiden O'Connell, one rushing touchdown. And here, so get this. In 10 games, 10 games, guys, 10 games for Aiden O'Connell with the 19th best offensive line, sacked 24 times, four fumbles, two lost. Again, 10 games. Hold on. 10 games. 19th best offensive line saying he's not a mobile guy. Not a mobile guy. Four fumbles, two lost, 24 times sacked. Deshaun Watson, mobile guy. $230 million contract. Just in six games, he sacked 20 times. Okay. With one fumble. But you go back the year before, in just six games, sacked, um, where are we at here? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I guess I don't have that. Okay. Oh, I had that. But again, just, just off of the five interceptions and sacked 20, sacked again, let's, let's fuck everything else. Let's keep this very simple for everybody. Six games, sacked 20 times. Aiden O'Connell, 10 games, sacked 24. So four more, four less games and he, four more games and only Aiden has four more sacks with the 19th best off, offensive line, Deshaun Watson, 20 times with the number two best offensive line. I just want to know if, if, if anybody, can anybody refute that Aiden O'Connell is a good quarterback? I'm not telling you he's the best. I'm not telling you that he, need, that he doesn't need to work on things. But when people say he's the reason and he, he, he's the guy we need to replace, you're, you're, you're crazy. You are fucking crazy. And if you have stats that can com compare to this, and, and here's the deal. I don't, don't bring up stats from some guy in college. Okay. Don't do it. Cause college stats don't mean a fucking thing. And I'm going to tell you this. If you guys think that kid from LSU who won the Heisman, listen, great athlete. I watched his, that guy is a, is a stud in college. No mistake about it. I'm not. I'm not taking away from him one bit what he's accomplished at the college level. Kid won the Heisman. I mean, that's irrefutable. But six four, two hundred pounds. If you think that guy is going to come into the NFL and do what Lamar Jackson can do, you're crazy. You are. He will. He will get broken. Okay. And then again, I. I go off of. Who are the highest highest paid quarterbacks? I know Deshaun Watson's one of them, $230 million. And you look at the stats between him and a guy, Aiden O'Connell, who's making like a million bucks a year. Let's just hold, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. 230. Look at this. 230. Where's my calculator? 230. Million, jeez. I mean, I, I don't know if I have enough zeros on my calculator here. I do. All right, divided by five. Forty-six million dollars a year. Forty-six million dollars a year. Aiden O'Connell's making like one point one two million dollars a year. Fourth round pick, and a guy who had. A, Statistically had a better defense than we did and had a way better offensive line than we did. And you look at the numbers as a mobile quarterback and what he did compared to Aiden O'Connell and Aiden O'Connell is our problem. Guys, listen, I'm not denying that we need another quarterback. 
I'd like to have Justin Fields. Really, uh, to be honest with you, before drafting somebody, I'd rather have Russell Wilson. Bring Russell Wilson in and have them compete. Nothing wrong with that. But to say that Aiden's a problem and that he's trash and he's this and that and he can't, he he's not mobile enough, you're full of shit, guys. These are the stats. These are the numbers. If you have better numbers, come on, come on, come on my show and tell me those numbers, please. And that's why I wanted to come on here by myself so I could get through this stuff. But I want your guys' comments. Tomorrow I'm going to come back live and, and, and I want someone to refute me on these. Somebody to refute me on this stuff. Oh, not only the offensive line, tight ends. What, what do we look at? This playoff games, majority of the offense go through the tight ends. Besides Kansas City, that Rice, who's a rookie, stud. Holy smokes. Guy played phenomenal. What about our tight end? Who, who I love. I, I do. It took me a little bit because again, Notre Dame. But Mayer, Meyer, he's good. Did we have him in the last four weeks? Five weeks? I don't know how long we, we haven't had him around. Did that hurt? Absolutely it hurt. Because look at how important tight ends are to an NFL team and a quarterback. Just look at these last five or six games. Tight ends came up huge. Tight ends came up probably more than any other position. We didn't have our best. Offensive line, 19th. Didn't have one of our best offensive linemen for most of those times. And if he did come back, his shoulder was so fucked he had to fight through stuff. And you want to get on Aiden O'Connell. Again, he could be from he could be from Michigan or Indiana, but he's a Raiders quarterback. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be be as realistic as I can. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't, they're right here. So please come on. And refute this. And try to convince me that Aiden's the problem. Because we almost made the playoff, guys. After getting rid of a head coach and a, and a, 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 a GM. And having a different offensive coordinator, which again, well, Stu, you're so hard on Derek Carr. He had to have these different offensive coordinators. And then just go back and look at Derek Carr's rookie year. See what his stats were like. I don't even know what draft pick he was, but he's, I, I, I'm assuming he was probably higher than Aiden O'Connell's. It probably made more money than Aiden O'Connell contract today than it was 12 years ago for him. And again, I go by the money. How, how mad would you guys be with Deshaun Watson as your quarterback and what he did the last two seasons for you? He didn't even finish this last year. I know this against Denver, Aiden O'Connell came back with his fucking hand wrapped up in thumb, still throwing touchdown passes. I know a lot, Herbert, a lot of these guys, you see um, Burroughs have hand injuries out for the whole season. So again, put emphasis where emphasis is due. In this draft, if you think we need to get a quarterback at number one, you're, you're, you guys are fucking crazy. And you're the reason why a lot of teams don't win. GMs that think that way. There's three other positions, maybe five other positions, that I draft before a quarterback at that, num at that number 13th pick. I've said this, corner. Linebacker, offensive lineman. Right there. Then, go fourth, D lineman. Then, you know what? Running back. Corner, linebacker, offensive lineman, D lineman. 
And I'm not even going to specify D tackle or D end. And then running back. Way before I think about a quarterback in the draft. But, as I love to say, I'm going to end it on this. I love the Raider Nation. I love the fans. I love, I love, I love being back involved. But what do I know? I'm just some fucking guy in the basement. <laughs>